up to book number 57. Who remembers how many books there are in the Bible? Sarah? 66. That's good. So we've got how many more? Nine more to go, don't we? Not too many. We're grouping some of them together. We only have a couple more weeks left. We only have 52 weeks in the year, but what week are we up to? We're up to week... 46. All right, so we're almost at the end of the year already. Man, doesn't... Time goes so quick, doesn't it? Life goes very quick as well, you know, kids? That's why you don't want to waste your life. It's so easy to waste life. But before you know it, you'll be old like me. Okay, so make sure you use your life wisely. Be the wise man. Use your life wisely. Build it on the rock. Okay, we're going to look at James. Now remember, we looked at all these letters that were written by Paul, the apostle. All right, now we move on to a letter written by somebody else. What do you think his name was that wrote this letter? Anyone have an idea? Who wrote the epistle of James? I'll give, you a, I'll give you a clue. His name is in the title of the book. James. Put your hand up. Steffi? No, his name is in the title of the book. James. James. Very good. Yeah, you need the answer, Simon, but I'll give Zephy a turn. That's right. James wrote this book. That's why it's called James. He wrote the epistle to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. So this is different. This wasn't an epistle written to James. This was an epistle written by James to other people, to the 12 tribes of Israel. And today we're going to focus more so on the tongue. But we'll get to that in a moment. Okay? So let's just look at one verse from each chapter. Five chapters in the letter from James. And they deal with many different practical topics. Things that we can, God, God will teach us, we can learn, and we can try and implement in our lives. Here's a verse from chapter 1. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. What is he saying here? When you hear something from God's word, you don't want to just hear it and then not do it. You know, sometimes you learn something in Bible club from God's word. Do you hear it and then not do it? Well, hopefully not. You know, this is what we want to strive to do. We want to be not only hearers, not hearers only, but doers. What does that mean? When you hear something that God tells you to do from the Bible, you need to try and do it. Otherwise, well, you're deceiving your own selves. What does that mean? You're tricking yourself into thinking you're a good Christian, but you're not a good Christian if you're only listening to God, but you're not doing it. It's like when your parents, maybe your mom, your dad tells you, hey, you need to do this. Are you a hero only? Or are you a doer as well? Hmm? So that's one lesson from James 1. So that's like this man. He's got his Bible. He's not just reading his Bible, but he's out with his Bible, right? Telling people about Jesus. That's what we do every Sunday afternoon. We go out and tell people about Jesus. All right, James chapter 2. What do we learn in James chapter 2? What is this? It's somebody's feet. What do you think it is, Ernie? Somebody's feet. Yeah, somebody's feet. Do you think he's sleeping? Or what do you think it is? He's dead. So this represents somebody who's dead. And what do we learn in James 2? He says, even so, faith... So that's our faith when we believe on Jesus. It says, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Right? So if all we have is our faith, but we don't put works to our faith, saying our faith is then dead. It's not going to be useful to anybody else. It's not going to bring life to anybody else when we add works to our faith. You see? So the, body, the Bible says, hey, just like the body... Without your spirit is dead. You know when your spirit leaves your body, what happens? Your body dies. Your faith is going to be the same. It's going to die if you don't add works to the faith. Come and sit down. Oh yeah, you can sit there. Go ahead. Looking good. Okay. So that's faith without works is dead. That's the second lesson from James. What's another lesson? This is the one we're going to do today. We're talking about the tongue. Now, when we say the tongue in the Bible, we're not talking about this actual physical thing, right? When we talk about the tongue, we're talking about the words that you say. And the, James tells us the tongue can be very dangerous. The things that you say, 
You know, think about, you know, who knows about the fires that are happening in New South Wales? You know about the fires, eh? Was it? Oh, there you go. You know, the big fires that are happening? You know, that fire, that fire starts just from a little flame somewhere in the bush. Maybe somebody started it or something happened. Somebody threw a cigarette butt into the bushes. But you know that, that little flame? Whoa, how big a fire it creates. Well, you know, the Bible says the tongue is like that. You know, sometimes you just say something maybe you don't mean. Say something not, you know, not nice. You say something about somebody else and you know that can just create a lot of problems, can't it? How many times have you seen problems happen from somebody just saying something? You ever seen that, Zephy? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's why we got here. Look at this. The tongue is a fire. Look at what it says here in James 3. The tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. What is this saying? It's like a world of sin. So is the tongue among our members. It's saying, hey, among our body, you know what can cause the most trouble? This one. The things that we say. That it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set of fire of hell. James 3. All right, let's look about James 4 now. What can we learn in James 4? James 4 tells us, look at this, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. What's a way you can humble yourself? It's when you pray to God. Right? You trust God to do, what's, to do the, what you need Him to do rather than trying to do everything yourself. You humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Look at this, and He shall lift you up. You see, so rather than lifting yourself up, making yourself look good, you serve God and God will lift you up. You see, so what's, God, what's your job? Your job is to make sure you stay humble. Right? Make sure you stay low. What's God's job? God's job is to lift you up if you humble yourself. But you know what? If you do God's job, if you try and lift yourself up, God's going to have to do your job. He's going to humble you. Okay, so you make sure you focus on your job, keeping yourself humble. God can do his job. You do God's job, God's going to start doing your job. Okay, so it's always good to stay humble. And the last one, James chapter 5, be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So what is this saying? It's saying we want to keep on trying to do the right thing. Don't quit doing the right thing. Always trying to do the right thing all the way until the Lord returns. We don't know when he's going to return. One day he's going to return. He's going to go through some hard times before he comes back. But that's why it says be patient. Make sure you endure. Be established in your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So we've got a craft today and the craft today is going to be based on this one. The tongue is a fire. Have you guys seen? I don't think any of our kids have seen this yet. What are we making today? <laughs> What's this? Oh. We are making a face mask today. This is what Elizabeth made. Maybe, maybe you guys can make it a bit more colourful. Elizabeth made it. This is a white face. <laughs> You guys can make a colourful one. And with our white face, what is this? This is to remind us what? The tongue. The tongue. What is it? The tongue is a fire, isn't it? So what does it say here? Instead of using our tongue for bad, we can use our tongue to pray to God. And it says here, Lord, help me tame my tongue. Okay, so we want to be careful with the things we say. And we're going to make a mask like this so it can remind us, oh, this tongue is dangerous, isn't it? Okay, all right, so let's go to the back. We're going to make a face mask and you guys can make the tongue whatever size you want. <laughs> 